Hi Nature Explorers, my name's Ellie and I work with wildlife just like Sarah and Sarah has asked me to make you a video all about reptiles. So in the video I'm hopefully going to show you some of the reptiles that live in our garden and I'm also going to tell you a little bit about the different species that we can find in Britain and there'll be some links posted underneath the, underneath the video um, for you to check and find out more. So in Britain, we have three species of lizards. So we have the sand lizard and the common lizard, which are very difficult to spot. Um, but we also have another lizard called a slow worm, which um, is a lizard that looks like a snake because it doesn't have any legs. Um, and that's a lizard that you're more likely to find in your gardens. have the smooth snake which is very very rare and you're not likely to spot that um, and we have the adder which is a little bit more common and you might find them if you go out walking in the hills or in heathland um, and then the third species of snake which you're more likely to find in your gardens because they really are the gardener's friend is the grass snake So if you want to be able to help an animal and encourage it into your garden, it's really good if you know what it's doing at different times of year. So I've made this yearly cycle primarily for slow worms, um, but you could do the same thing for any of the reptiles that we have in Britain. And I'll just go through it with you so that you know what they're doing when um, and you can help them in your garden. So let's think back to October time. And this is when uh, slow worms do something October what are you guys doing you're carving pumpkins you're thinking about your Halloween costumes well slow worms are thinking about going to sleep for a very long time and that's what hibernation is so slow worms get their heat for their bodies from the outside they can't make themselves nice and warm like you and me they have to lie in the sunshine and they need nice warm weather so that they've got energy to move around well if we think about the autumn and the winter it's getting very cold isn't it and so the slow worms and the other reptiles they can't bask in the sunshine enough to give them the energy to move around so it's much safer for them if they go and find a nice um, a nice bowl hole or somewhere nice and cozy that's going to stay the same temperature for a long time um, to go and hibernate in so they hibernate round about October time and they stay there all the way through the winter, so all the way through Christmas, um, all the way through New Year, up until springtime, up until March. So when we start to see the first flowers coming out, the first bumblebee queens flying around looking for nest sites, that's when reptiles come out of hibernation. And that's the best time to try and see reptiles because they're doing a lot of basking, they're lying out a lot. Um, they're really working hard to, to feed and to build up their body condition so that they can get ready for mating. So around about April time, that's when um, slow worms and other reptiles, that's when they pair up and find a mate um, and they breed. Now through May through to summertime, this is where different reptiles do different things. Now um, slow worms, they their babies in their tummies for all of this time so they have live young around in September but uh, grass snakes do something differently and this is where you can help them in your garden grass snakes lay eggs around about June time and they need somewhere really nice and warm and safe to lay their eggs um, and to incubate their eggs keep their eggs nice and warm and this is where if you create maybe a habitat pile um, or a compost heap which won't be disturbed during this time um, this will be a really nice safe warm place for the grass snakes to lay their eggs and then we get to the end of the summer and this is where uh, the slow worms they give birth to live young so these bits of wool that I've stuck on here around about the length of a baby slow worm September through to October they feed 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 to try and get nice and fat so they can then go into hibernation again in October and sleep all the way through the winter so like I said you can make one of these charts yourself and you might like to put on it 
uh, your birthday or dates that are really important to you so that as you go through the year um, it helps to remind you what the slow worms are doing at the same time. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do in our video is we're going to have a look around the garden um, at different spots that the reptiles really like to hide out in. So I've come to one of the most popular spots in our garden for slow worms once they emerge from hibernation. Now I'll show you why it's popular with them. So here we've got an old doormat um, and because this is black and made of rubber it warms up really quickly in the sun and it holds that heat and the slow worms love to lie underneath it and take in all that lovely warmth. And then over the back we've got an earth bank with lots of holes in it so they can go in there and they can hide and there's lots of rough vegetation so there's also lots of food in that vegetation like slugs and worms and snails and things. So I've come out quite early in the morning, it's about nine o'clock um, and this is a really good time to see reptiles because they'll already be coming out to warm up but they won't be so warm that they'll have lots of energy and be really quick and scoot off. So let's have a look under the mat and see what we can find. Here you are. So there's a lovely, lovely bunch of slow worms under there. Um, you can see that there's males and females, although it's very difficult to tell them apart, but the females tend to be kind of more reddy and the males tend to be more grey. The females tend to be a bit larger, but that's also not always. So what we've got is if you have a look at... There you go, they're starting to move there. If you have a look at their little faces, you might be able to see that they've got eyelids. And that is because slow worms are actually lizards and not snakes they're lizards that don't have any legs and the rest of their body is laid out like a lizard as well not like a snake so what you've got is all the way along here they've got um organs all the way along their body um to where their legs would be to their pelvis um and then they've got a tail with no organs in it and if we just have a look at this slow worm at the back here you might be able to see that their tail um, looks a bit blunt uh, and also looks a bit sore at the end as well. And that is because slow worms can make their tails drop off. So if they get scared or if maybe something like a cat or something tries to catch them, they can make their tail drop off and then the tail wriggles around on the ground and distracts whatever it is that's trying to eat them. And so the rest of the slow worm can scuttle off to safety. Now, this is actually quite a good plan because there's nothing that they need in their tail. There's no organs, there's nothing useful in there. Um, and so the rest of the slow worm can, can go off and, and be nice and safe. So let's have a look at what else is under here. So we've got lots of snail shells. So slow worms love to eat snails. And there's a few ants on the top. So later in the day, if I look under here, maybe around lunchtime or something like that, there's loads and loads of ants under this mat and slow worms love to eat ants, especially baby slow worms. Um, so this is quite a good place for them because they've got food, they've got warmth and they've got shelter as well. So this is a part of our garden that we like to call the snake pile. And essentially it's just a big pile of rotting grass and uh, other garden clippings. So this isn't our compost heap because on our compost heap we turn it, we disturb it regularly and it's not a very secure place for reptiles to be um, because you might catch them with a fork or squash them or something. But in the snake pile we just leave it all year round. So underneath you've got um, lots of rotting vegetation and as things rot they produce heat and that's what the grass snakes really love to lay their eggs in. As I said earlier, if you've got a nice, safe, warm place, they can lay their eggs there and they'll be undisturbed for long enough for those legs to mature and then hatch. And then this pile is in the sun for most of the day. So on top we've got all this dry grass which keeps it um, nice and waterproof. And if you have a look, I don't know if you can see on the video, but often we get things like butterflies basking, lots of spiders. There's lots of invertebrate activity on here because it's so nice and warm and it captures the sun. So sometimes we have a grass snake basking here and you can see from my shadow that that's normally in the sun. 
around about this time of day and the good thing about that spot for the grass snake is that there's loads of places to hide so if they are lying out and they're exposed while they're sunbathing and um, someone comes into the greenhouse they can quickly scoot off um, and hide grass snakes love to hunt in ponds so they like to eat amphibians um, and so we've put a roof tile just at the end of the pond sometimes we get frogs under there and things but sometimes we get slow worms and grass snakes just hanging out there this is a spot where we found lots of slow worms um, so far but I want to just see if there's any other reptiles underneath there so keep your eyes peeled just going to lift up the mat There, in the middle. Can you see? A little baby grass snake. Can you see his tongue? Now that would have been a grass snake that hatched out last year. Because um, at the moment grass snakes are mating. And the eggs won't hatch until kind of June, July time. So this is a little grass snake that... Oh, off he goes. Whee! I just see him disappearing up the back. This is a little grass snake would have hatched out last year and hibernated somewhere in the garden. Um, possibly, if I just drop the mat, possibly in this bank behind the mat. Um, and he survived the winter and now he's out and about, which is great. Very exciting. And it just goes to show, I mean, there's nothing fancy about this refugia that I've got here. It's simply a doormat, so it's worth having a go and putting one down in your garden because you never know what you're going to get. Right nature explorers, it's build it time. So this week we're going to make a reptile refuge which will be somewhere nice and safe and lovely and warm for our reptiles to shelter in and bask in. So I've chosen this spot here for my reptile refuge. So you can see that it's got lots of tusky grass around it and this area here behind it um, these are all wildflowers that I let grow up really tall every summer. And then if we look behind it here, there's an earth bank um, with lots of rubble and things in it well, anyway. So that's lots of crevices and places for the uh, reptiles to hunt and to hide. So these are the materials that I've chosen to build my reptile refuge. I've chosen some nice big logs and I've also got um, some broken bits of concrete and bricks that I'm going to use. Well. and what I'm also going to do is just pile some soil over it too. Um, so you can use whatever you've got lying around in your garden, you can use old plant pots, any old bits of wood, things left over from DIY like old cupboard doors or worktops, it really doesn't matter because the overall thing that you're trying to create is a nice mound with lots of spaces and nooks and crannies where the reptiles can hide and ledges to crawl out and bask on and you want things that will warm up nicely in the sun um, so the reptiles can be <laughs> nice and happy there um, all through the summer. So I've built a bank um, where the back of it is covered with soil uh, and the front of it um, will catch the sun nicely. And what I've also done here, much to Farnan's delight, is um, I've put down another bit of old mat um, on the front of it to see if I can attract any slow worms to bask underneath it. Obviously when it's more established I won't let the dog lie on it. Um, but seeing as it's just built I'm going to let Farnan sit there for a little bit. Um, so basically you can do something similar in your garden and it doesn't have to be this big, it can be much smaller, it can be just a roof tile or a concrete slab that you put down with a bit of space underneath it or if you find an old bit of carpet or roofing felt or something like that you can just put that down in a sunny spot in your garden with longer vegetation around it and hopefully you'll get some reptiles underneath it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Like I said, share pictures of what you've been doing in your garden for reptiles and I look forward to seeing what you've been up to.